drawing this and numbering them so y'all can number the initiatives and make a little copy of this drawing on your notes if you like. Y'all's turn again. Somebody give me an initiative. Make it stupid, I don't care. Make me look stupid, I'll work it for you. Charging for deliveries. Okay, I like it. Is the opportunity to increase our sales 10% by charging for deliveries? I think the answer is clearly no. Uh, first, we don't deliver everything. Um, and by the way, that could be an initiative where we're only going to charge for deliveries because we're going to Lincoln, so we're only going to charge in Lincoln. We're not going to charge for the locals. But let's assume it's charging for everything. It could be the same initiative for adding an environmental fee on every invoice. Kind of the same thing. So where, would this, where, are we likely, where is the increase in sales likely to be? It's likely to be more towards small than big. Would right here be okay for now? That's our potential results if we charge for deliveries. Now, is this going to be difficult or easy? It's easy enough to just add six bucks on the invoice. There's no problem. I'm going to tell you that I don't think it's easy at all because I think you're going to have some fist fights on the phone. I think the customers are going to come unglued on you. And I think the potential for the customers to stop buying from you as a result of it is fairly high unless you're the only guy in town with the product. And arguably, the small increase in sales, remember this is not... This is big increase, small increase, or this could actually be headed towards a reduction in sales. I'm going to tell you that I think your sales could go down as a result of that, but let's assume that the customers will pay it. Some of them. Is it fair to say all of them will not want to pay for deliveries? Only some of them will be willing. Some of them won't notice it. Okay. And you'll, but by the way, now you're going to have to train the salespeople on what do you tell the customer when he calls in and he's pissed off because he found six dollars on his invoice. That's not going to, you're going to have to give the customer a word track. I mean the, the salesperson a word track on what he tells the customer. And then you're going to have to make a heartfelt decision about whether or not you want to tell them in advance. Because if you tell them in advance that you're going to charge them for the delivery, now the word track gets even more complicated. So uh, it, I don't think it's easy at all. At best, it's, it's middle of the graph, and I, think, I actually think it's difficult. I think you don't realize it's difficult until you start getting the calls from the mad customers, and then you realize how much more difficult it could be. So I'm going to, but I'll, by the way, I think this is a bad initiative, so I'm going to be generous with it, but I'm going to put it here, okay, just to the left of the middle line. So the potential for sales increases or is small, and it's not as easy as it might sound. Maybe that's a good way to say it. That's number five. Okay, next one. Come on, he was brave. I like it. Okay, so we're going to hire more salespeople. How hard is it, or I'm sorry, what is the potential for an increase in sales? And this is going to be directly related to how many salespeople you already have. But if you have two and you add a third, then in, are we to the end? No, no, we're okay. I thought you were coming up to throw me out. <laughs> so uh, the salespeople, uh, to hire another salesperson, if we have two salespeople and we're going to add a third one, then in theory, at, once we've got him fully trained, we should be able to increase our sales 30%. If we have five salespeople and we're going to add six, then our sales are going to increase 20%. But it's pretty easy to see that it could be a 10% lift if we can get a good salesperson. Is it hard to get a good salesperson? Fairly hard. I'm sorry? Yeah, he's got to have something to sell. Yeah, we hadn't got to the difficult part. Well, actually, we are. we're talking about how hard it is to hire the right person. But it is hard to hire the right person. And yet, you know, we've hired people that sold shoes and they did really well. Some people say, oh, he's got to come from another salvage yard. I don't believe that. I'm sorry, I just don't believe that anymore. Maybe it used to be the case. But in any case, let's agree it's not real easy to hire one. Now, so the potential lift in sales, I think, is all the way at the top. So it's at the big. That's a 10% lift. Okay. Now, if we add another salesperson, are we going to do more deliveries? Are we going to do more processing? And are we going to have to buy more cars? The answer is yes. To all of them. 
and you're going to have to think about what that means. If you're currently doing 100 deliveries and you're going to have a 20% lift in sales, then you're going to need to do 120. That probably means one more truck. Something like that, whatever it means. And so the potential lift is big. Where does it rank from the middle? Let's assume it's not easy, okay? Is that okay? Who, who, who gave me this? You did, okay. We can assume it's not easy. How far do you want me to go towards difficult? Halfway, all the way, a third of the way? <laughs> Halfway. <laughs> he said here, and I'm going to put it here. Of course, you're talking to a guy. We had 160 at Greenleaf, 160 salespeople. And five, this is number six. I am a believer. My story last month was how you should always be hiring salespeople. Always. If you wait till you need a salesperson to hire one, you're never going to get. You're never going to do as well as you could. The single biggest piece to growing sales is hiring salespeople. And the way, you hire, the way you hire salespeople is to always be hiring. Because if you're always hiring, you'll get the call from Pete, who's at your competitor, who's pissed off because they did something to him. And he wants to come to you. Because you're always hiring. He knows that. And you'll get applications. Every now and then you'll get somebody that just moved into the area from California. And they did something and they've got an absolutely glowing resume. You'll also get chances to hire people paying a whole lot less money than you normally pay because you happen to be hiring and they happen to be looking. And if you wait until you're actually needing somebody to hire somebody, your choices are going to be very limited. So I'm an advocate of hiring more salespeople to grow sales. As a matter of fact, I always said the reason we got so big was because we paid more than everybody else. We were always hiring. We had really good processes. The salespeople could count on the cars coming and the car parts going out and so on and so on. And as a result, nobody could hire my salespeople because, because we had the best salespeople. The other thing we did, and it's one of my dirty little tricks, was when a salesperson would come to me, and he was really good and he was working somewhere else, I would offer him a signing bonus. And sometimes the signing bonus might be pretty large. Call it $10,000. Okay. Who has a salesperson that doesn't live week to week? Every salesperson on your staff lives week to week. They always live beyond their means. The best salespeople are prima donnas. They're hard to manage. And so they had never seen $10,000 in one pile. So if I offer them a salary or commission that's commensurate to what they're already making, plus a $10,000 signing bonus, and by the way, I don't give the signing bonus on the day they sign up. I give them like $2,000 the day they sign up, and I give them $4,000 in 30 days and I give them 4,000 more in 60 or 90 days. So they don't get the bonus if they don't stay 90 days. But they can still count on it. It's $10,000. Now we all know what happens next. They turn around and they go back to their old boss and they say, well, I'm going to work over here. He says, oh no, I got to have you. Well, they offered me a $10,000 signing bonus. What do you think they're going to tell them? There's no hope. No hope. He's gone. He's toast. He's coming to you. And you know, you can say, oh my God, but $10,000, Ron. You know, we're talking about a salesperson that's going to sell $750,000 next year, or a million, or a million five, depending on how talented he is. To me, the $10,000, is it's not an expense, it's a capital, it's a capital investment. And by doing that, you're, you, one of two things happens. You either get better salespeople and you fire, when you get him, you fire somebody that's not worth a crap, okay? or you just add to your sales. But more salespeople is the key. So this is initiative, didn't we put it here, was it number six? Was to add a salesperson. Here's the way the grid works. You may have already figured it out. All we're interested in is big and easy. First, that's what we want to work on is big and easy. And you'd be amazed when you're talking to your staff and your peers and your other people how they'll all come up with the bullets in the same squares. They'll all say, well, you know, it's a little easier than harder, or it's a little smaller than bigger, but you'll be everybody will kind of agree. It's pretty unusual for somebody to say it's really easy and somebody else to say it's really hard. Everybody has the same concerns. Now if we'd have been having this meeting with our employees and we were talking about how we might do things, then now all of a sudden we get them very focused on number two and number four and they agreed to it. They sat in the meeting. They gave their input. They feel like part of the process. It's not just something stupid that came from the boss. So we do two and four first. We're never going to do number five. Because it's difficult and it's small. We're never going to do it. 
if we get number two and we get number four done, we're going to move over here to number three and number six. We might make it to number one. And obviously, our resources, if we have the cash, you know, if one of these takes a lot of cash, we may never get to there. If, but if we have the cash, we might choose that over that. If we hate salespeople and we hate hiring, we might not do number six, we might choose to come to number one. But in any case, we're going to do number two and number four first. Let's do one more, cutting expenses. Because everything we did was sales. But we can do that, cutting expenses on the same one. We're spending too much money for freight. We want to cut our expenses for freight. And by the way, we can cut our expenses for freight if we just collect for all of it. Because we're really talking about our net expenses. We'd like to be reimbursed. So is the potential benefit big or small? And if you use the 10% rule here, if we're currently spending $3,000 a month on freight that we're not being reimbursed for, what are the chances that we can get a 10% improvement in that number? And it's really easy to see that that wouldn't take but a couple of invoices where we actually charge the customer for the freight. So it's all the way at the top. Is it going to be easy or difficult? It's not easy because we got to go to the salespeople and we got to say, okay, starting tomorrow, you got to charge for the freight. You, and you got to charge this amount. You don't just get to call the freight company and they tell you $68 and you tell the customer $68. First, we got $68 because we ship a lot of stuff. The customer can't get it for $68. So we tell them to mark the freight up 20%. I make the number up, but it probably works. So instead of $68, we're going to charge the customer $80. If we overcharge 20% on everything, then that one shipment that gets weighed, that they came back and back billed us for the difference in weight, and the three parts that came back that we had to pay freight on that we didn't get any money for, the 20% will help us give us the lift. And the invoices that had zero freight on them in the past are now going to have some freight on them. So it's easy to see that we're going to get some, a pretty big lift. And it's probably not easy. Arguably, I think it is very easy. But I'll put it here, number seven. This was a reduction in expenses for freight, number seven. OK, does, everybody was too shy. But does everybody understand how the tool works? It's especially powerful when you loop your employees in for a given department. You can use it for the smallest of things. How do we reduce our time and the way we fill orders? Let everybody talk. Well, I think we can do it by adding air compressors to, air, to every one of the pool vehicles. Oh, I think we shouldn't pull these kind of parts. You know, you, your employees will have all kinds of ideas on how to reduce time on pulling parts. You can use this one whole sheet just for that one initiative. Okay, thank you for having me. Oh, we're going to have a drawing. Oh, we should have got somebody to bring us a bowl. Do they trust you? Okay. Do they trust you? I don't know. Pull four of them out. Did anybody not give us one in the first meeting that wants to give us one now? Okay. Who else has one that didn't give us one in the first meeting?